What's up, YouTube? Chris Baker here from the band Rugby. This is my Yamaha CP70B. It's black and weighs over 1 billion pounds. I mean, for the piano, that's pretty normal, I guess, but uh, this is no ordinary piano. But before we get into that, let's get some action shots going. Mmm! Look at that classic 1970s design! That's right, this thing's almost 50 years old if you count that up. See the way they shaped this front panel? Beautiful! These Japanese people knew what they were doing back in the day. Some serious samurai sword metallurgists working on this one. As you can see, it is in fact a piano, like we talked about earlier. But, is it also a transformer? Did Yamaha make a transforming piano? We'll find out. It looks like it was manufactured in Hamamatsu, Japan, back in the day. This is the sustain pedal. Uh, just one sustain pedal. It's got a little rod. You can unscrew it there on the bottom. And yes, those are hinges. I wonder what that's for. Made by Yamaha, just there on the back. As you can see, mine's seen some road rash. Uh, it was like that before I bought it. Uh, it was actually covered in gaff tape. Uh, luckily, I took most of that off. As you can see here, it's got a handle. I would say most pianos probably don't have handles. Let's see, uh, let's see what it sounds like normally, like a normal piano, just in the room acoustically. You know how pianos are supposed to work. It's definitely a little quieter than a piano, but it does sound like a piano nonetheless. Let's take a look around the side here, back where we were. What's that thing over there? A little jack situation. It looks like kind of like an XLR, but it's only got two inputs instead of three. I just happen to have this cable here that looks like it might plug in there. Let's see what happens. Okay. Well, look at that. We got some juice. Or something. Something, something in here is powered. On the other side, we've got two XLR inputs. XLR inputs. We've got two of them. Pianos definitely do not have XLR inputs. This is not a normal piano. What is this thing? Let's find out. Let's take a take the lid off and find out what's going on underneath here. Wow, look at that. Well, we got a harp just like a regular piano, but if you look along the edges, we got a lot of wires running around. It's a little bit louder with the cover open, but still like maybe a fifth of the volume of a normal piano would be useless acoustically, I would think, in a normal piano-like situation. Let's take it off all the way. You know what I'm saying? Take it off. Find out what's going on underneath here. Ooh, got more wires, even more. So obviously we got some kind of circuit board there in the front connected to all those knobs. I'm gonna go around the side here and look at this in the back. You see those little metal things right there underneath of the strings? I'll tell you what those are. Each one of those is a pickup, a piezo pickup. There are the same amount of piezo pickups as there are notes on this piano. So I believe it's 70 or so odd pickups, which is quite a bit more than your average guitar uh, of, you know, guitar variety in this, uh, quite a bit more. All right, background to the front, we got this dope panel here. We got a volume, bass, middle, treble controls. We got some various EQ functionality. We got tremolo on and off. We got depth and speed, as well as a patch bay there, so you can plug in your pedals right there in the front, as in guitar pedals. Because like I said, this is literally a giant guitar with 70 pickups. So it's important to note that the XLR outputs on the side that you saw earlier, there was two of them. This unit actually is not stereo. It is a dual mono output. So the same signal comes out of both. Unless you engage the tremolo, then it kind of pans left to right with the tremolo situation. So that's cool. But anyway, 
Enough talking. Let's check out what it sounds like. Pretty cool sound, huh? Pretty unique. That's those 70 piezo pickups for you. Get you something that you've never heard before. Electric piano, literally. Now, that didn't come cheap, I must say, in 1975. We're looking at about 20 grand with inflation uh, to buy one of these back in the day. You had to have that freaking major label dough, you know what I'm saying? But that didn't stop a lot of bands from using these. These were actually pretty popular live use. It was the best way to get a piano sound on those giant rock stages that were super loud, those arena rock bands. There was no way to make a regular piano this loud without feedbacking like crazy with microphones. This was a better solution. Feedback to signal on this is so much better than a real piano. And a lot of bands, like I said, took notice. Huge bands, like freaking U2 used this freaking thing back in the day. It was seen on Michael Jackson's stages. It was freaking big time used by Electric Light Orchestra. Freaking Elton John used this freaking thing. Frank Zappa was using it live. Genesis used it. Freaking Journey used this thing. Peter Gabriel was all over it in the studio and live. P-Funk freaking rocked it too. Even Prince, especially like Purple Rain. It's all over Purple Rain. But it wasn't just old people that used this. We got some new bands too. Uh, Keen's a modern example. Used it a lot in a lot of their records. And Wolfpack is another one that's been doing some really cool stuff lately. Check out Tea Time. That video is really cool. Features the CP70 out front. How about another demo? that was very very nice very pretty but let's get experimental let's plug in uh, two guitar amps and some tresonator let's do it
And we really do take it apart. This thing completely comes apart into two different sections for transport. That was the other reason people bought in the 70s. We can take this thing totally apart. It's got separate cases for the tops and the bottoms. It's pretty cool. You won't want to miss it. I recommend subscribing because that way you know you won't miss it. And also maybe hit that red bell button because it is supposed to be something I'm supposed to say. So you should do it. Also, check it out. There's Lula down by my dang Japanese Hoffner knockoff. All right, peace out. See you next week.